International and the European Court of Human Rights painted a grim picture of Spanish justice today in terms of freedom of expression. Hello, and welcome to Catalan News. The Human Rights Court in Strasbourg ruled for Spain to compensate two Catalan men who had been sentenced to pay a fine for burning pictures of the former Spanish king. The court says that their actions falls under freedom of expression. Also today, Amnesty International criticized judges prosecuting artists. Here at Catalan News, we'll tell you about both of these statements and we'll also tell you about how Uber is back in Barcelona. Spain's approach towards freedom of expression was questioned today by the NGO Amnesty International and the European Court of Human Rights. The authority in Strasbourg ruled against Spain in a case going back to 2007. It's been more than 10 years since the events, but the court's sentence was made public in a moment when human rights in the country is a hot topic. It's the last word. Burning pictures of the king is not a crime. The European Court of Human Rights has put an end to the case of two Catalan men who were fined for setting photos of the monarch on fire in 2007. Their crime inciting hatred. But they took their case to the international courts and they won. Now Spain has to pay the fines back as well as 9,000 euros in compensation. In a blow to the Spanish judiciary, the court in Strasbourg ruled that freedom of expression protects political criticism with a permissible degree of provocation and that includes burning pictures of the king. La sentència de Estrasburg deixa clar que l'independentisme, que la crítica a les institucions de l'Estat, que la crítica política a les institucions de l'Estat mai podrà ser discurs d'odi. The ruling comes at a time when the Spanish justice system is being challenged from abroad. Today, an Amnesty International report found that an anti-terror law was being used to prosecute artists, journalists and citizens in general. The number of convictions has increased dramatically in recent years, and that, they warned, is part of a sustained attack on freedom of expression. The report includes the cases of hip-hop artists recently sentenced to prison for allegedly glorifying terrorism. Rappers warn of the consequences that their prosecution entails. I think it forms a part of this strategy of terror of the state that wants to impose the auto-censure and that, using us as heads of Turkey, others will think at the time of saying things that are hurtful for this anti-democratic regime that does not respect anything so fundamental as the freedom of expression or the freedom of expression. The Spanish Criminal Code prosecutes the glorification of terrorism and the humiliation of its victims. According to Amnesty, these are vague expressions, and such ambiguity allows judges to strip away rights under the guise of defending them. The sentence from the European Court of Human Rights comes at a convenient time for pro-independence parties, as it looks towards this institution in the future to respond to Spain's latest actions against them. One is the issue of the presidency. Madrid's judges have already blocked the nomination of two candidates for the post deposed President Carles Puigdemont and jailed MP Jordi Sanchez. As a response to the incarcerated MP being denied attending his investiture debate, the Parliament Bureau is considering taking criminal action against the Supreme Court. In the meantime, the lack of president and government continues, and today parties increase the pressure for the situation to come to an end. Entenem que en el marc d'aquesta setmana hauríem de acabar de tenir tota la informació i totes les propostes sobre la taula per poder conformar un govern tan aviat com sigui possible. Aquest acord de govern és, insisteixo, una autèntica condemna per a aquelles persones que ara mateix estan a la presó i aquelles persones que ara mateix estan en llibertat condicional, perquè és reincidir en el mateix que els ha portat allà. The Catalan Tax Office announced relevant news today as regards a scourge shared by many countries around the world, tax evasion. The authority has been criticized by some spheres in the past few years, deeming it is unnecessary given that the Spanish one is also in operation in Catalonia. Yet, one of its officials defended the institution as a result of the figures presented today. Around 200 million euros were recovered from tax fraud in Catalonia last year an increase of 16% compared to 2016. The figures are part of the annual report of the Catalan administration's plan to prevent and reduce tax fraud. The plan includes 86 measures aimed at raising public awareness of tax fraud. Since it was launched three years ago, it has uncovered 557 million euros. The results of the plan prove its success, says the head of the tax agency. Aquest particular rècord en la lluita de recursos, en els recursos aflorats en la lluita contra el frau fiscal, significa un aval, si no total, 
sí, molt important en el desplegament realitzat per part de l'Agència Tributària Catalana. Some 76 million euros were uncovered by inspections. The tax agency has focused its work on two main taxes, property tax and property transfer and certified legal documents tax. They also launched campaigns targeted at specific sectors, such as loans between private individuals and administrative concessions. The inheritance and donations tax fraud is especially relevant. It adds up to 69 million euros and accounts for 35% of the total amount of money uncovered. Then comes the tax on property transfer and legal acts, as well as other taxes, such as property or gambling taxes. Tax offices and governments everywhere have also shown great concern in the past few years about the sharing economy. In fact, Barcelona was one of the only major cities in Europe where the transport company Uber was not allowed, that is, until today. The firm announced its return after a three-year gap. In 2014, it found the opposition of the taxi drivers and local authorities. A court ruling forced it to stop its service that year on the grounds that it had no license to operate. Now, the company is back, this time with permits much cheaper to get than the ones for regular taxis. This has infuriated cab drivers once again. They announced that they intend to fight Uber as they did in the past. Welcome to Hell was the greeting made by One Taxi Association on Twitter when they learned of Uber's comeback. Moving on to a story that has moved the local community of the Maresme County on the outskirts of Barcelona. A dead beached whale was spotted yesterday in the coastal of the town of Moncat. Today, the animal was towed by boat to the nearby port of Badalona. It was a fin whale, 13 meters long and weighing 12 tons. A maritime rescue team and some firefighters managed to move it to the point where it was easier to remove. The whale was put onto a truck with a crane and taken to a town 150 kilometers away in western Catalonia. There, the body will be thermally dehydrated. The organic matter will then be turned into combustible flour and biodiesel. Now, let's take a step back into the past, all the way back to the 15th century, and up into the Catalan Pyrenees to a new exhibition that shed some light onto a dark time indeed, the witch hunts of the late Middle Ages. The Catalan Pyrenees was one of the first places in all of Europe to believe in witchcraft, so much so that some of the first documented trials against those suspected of practicing black magic was here in Catalonia. And now you can learn more about this moment in history in a new exhibit open today, fruit of two years of research. The exhibit They Were Talked About and They Were There is held in the western Anno Valleys. It collects artifacts and findings on the subject, revealing some significant discoveries. For example, the majority of individuals were accused by neighbors, often blamed as the cause of their ill fate. And most sobering of all, 90% of those convicted and sentenced to death were women. But by the 18th century, research shows that times had changed. Les elites intellectuals europees van acabar adoptant un consens definitiu. La secta de les bruixes no existia ni havia existit mai. Els suposats crims comesos per les bruixes eren fruit de la superstició medieval i les confessions de les acusades eren el resultat de les irregularitats dels judicis i del fanatisme dels perseguidors. Visitors can see the exhibit until the beginning of May at the Ecomuseu d'Esterri d'Àneu, where they can also admire fascinating objects like protective amulets, ancient legal texts documenting witch trials, and ritual objects for spells. But not everything is for adults. There's a section dedicated especially for the youngest museum goers to learn more about concepts like fear, freedom, and different. And as our show draws to a close, we want to show you some more music from this weekend, but this time with one of the most typical instruments, the guitar. Este Stona, guitarist of Ukrainian origin, ended the Neo-Folk MUD Festival in the western town of Lleida to a sold-out audience in the atypical venue of the town's old cathedral. We hope you like the music, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.